Risk of material misstatement is defined in the international standards of auditing as follows. It is the risk that the financial statements are materially misstated prior to audit, which consists of two components, and that is inherent risk and control risk. What is important here is that you can see that those two components have to be assessed at the assertion level, as you can see in the red text, and those two components are inherent risk, control risk. Inherent risk is the susceptibility of an assertion about class transaction, account balance, etc., to material misstatement. That's the inherent risk. Control risk is the risk that that misstatement could occur and not be detected and corrected by the client system of internal control. We are all familiar with those definitions. Now, how is that applied in the probe process? To explain the application in the probe process, we are going to put the process on the slide, not the entire audit process. The finalization stage is not relevant to this discussion, so I'm going to leave it out. I'm only going to focus on the risk assessment procedures as well as the further procedures. Those are the two stages of the audit that we're going to focus on. And if we can break those stages up into its different components, then you will see that the first stage is basically your risk assessment at both financial statement as well as assertion level. So the first, if I can just run through those blocks briefly, the first box is inherent risk assessment at financial statement level. Then we do the fraud risk assessment at financial statement level. Then we do both of those inherent and fraud risk assessment, but at assertion level. That's the third box. Then we move on to control risk. Control risk at the financial statement level and then control activities, which is essentially your control risk assessment at the assertion level. So those are your risk assessment procedures. After that will follow your further procedures, which consist of test of control and substantive procedures. How is that done in practice? In practice, it doesn't really matter in what order you do that, although it does make sense to do the overall level first and then to do the uh, specific assertion level next. So in probe, we have therefore ordered it as follows. We do 11.20 first, inherent risk at financial statement level. Then we do 11.30, control risk at financial statement level. Then we do 11.40 fraud risk at financial statement level. You can see it makes logical sense because it looks at everything at an overall level uh, before we look at the specifics. Then we go and look at the specifics and there we look at the control activities first. At, uh, that's at the specific assertion level, that's activity level. And then we look at inherent and fraud risk assessment at assertion level. On 1160, we look at all the assertions, we look at specific materiality, we do some analytical review, we look at specifically identified risks, and that leads us to the conclusion of inherent and fraud risk assessment at the assertion level. How does that relate to the previous slide, which showed you control risk and inherent risk? That's how it relates. Inherent risk is essentially the first three boxes on that slide. That is basically the inherent risk and fraud risk assessment, both at overall as well as assertion level, exactly as the statements require it. Control risk is the control side, the control risk assessment at financial statement level and at control activities. And then you can only, you have to confirm that control risk assessment by doing tests of control. So the control risk assessment actually covers three boxes. It goes into the further procedures. So now the next question is, how does risk of material misstatement come into this? We've now defined inherent risk, we've defined control risk. What is risk of material misstatement? For that, you need to understand that risk of material misstatement doesn't stay the same throughout the audit. It starts low, it goes higher, and then it decreases again. Uh, it goes higher when you do the risk assessment. So you go to 1120, 1140, 1160, all of those will help to increase the risk of material misstatement. You will become aware of more and more and more risks, so the auditor's risk of material misstatement actually increases. The auditor's assessment of risk of material misstatement actually increases. Then we assess control risk, and when we find controls, control environment, monitoring procedures, etc., that can help to mitigate risk, then that in fact decreases the risk. So that's why you can see that that curve goes up and then somewhere between inherent and control risk it starts going down again and then when you do tests of control and you confirm that your control risk assessment was valid you actually have an even lower risk of material misstatement and then once you've done your audit procedures you end up with the remaining risk of material misstatement or at that stage we rather call it detection risk and then at that stage it will be equal so what is the definition of risk of material misstatement it is 
is something that that moves the auditing standards have chosen to define it at that point where my arrow is right now after you've done the tests of control but before you actually start the audit that is the definition of risk of material misstatement now the problem with that is it's it's, it's fine it's perfectly uh, correct theoretically but in practice it is a process where that moves backwards and forwards because you assess it then you do your test of control then you reassess it so in practice it's actually more like the arrow moves a little bit to that point because you make a preliminary assessment of risk of material misstatement then you do your test of control and then you have your final assessment of risk of material misstatement now what we use in probe up to the end of section 11 up to the end of our risk assessment procedures is that point that i'm showing there right now it is your risk of material misstatement before you have brought the control risk into account sorry before you have brought the effects of the test of control into account now when you go and do the test of control you go to the next step and that then takes you to the uh, to your your final uh, detection risk once you've tested it like that so risk of material misstatement in probe is therefore defined at the point indicated, which is the point after you have assessed all your risks, but before you have done your tests of, tests of control, effectively a preliminary risk of material misstatement, because after you have done your tests of control, you will reassess your risk of material misstatement.